Hi, I'm Rick Ozzy Nelson. I'm director of the Homeland Security and Counterterrorism Program here at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Today we're fortunate to be joined by Shmendra Paul, the program manager for the information sharing environment. Uh, Schmendra's responsibilities include facilitating the sharing of information relating to homeland security, weapons of mass destruction, and counterterrorism between the federal, state, local, and private sector partners. Recently at CSIS, we had a conference on information sharing. The keynote speaker was General Clapper, the Director of National Intelligence. So Schmendra, thanks for being here today. Ozzy, thank you for having me here today, and thanks to you and CSIS for hosting that wonderful event just a little while ago. You know, Shmendra, during the conference, we heard a lot about, um, you know, significant efforts we've made in information sharing since 9-11. Um, what are some of the examples that you point to that demonstrate the successes the government's seen? Well, the success that I'd like to highlight is the Nationwide Suspicious Activity Reporting Initiative, or NSI. Um, NSI is, just codifies what police officers have been doing in their communities for over 150 years, walking a beat, patrolling in a radio car, looking for suspicious activity, and taking action to protect the communities. We've trained over, over 200,000 police officers across the country in the behavior-based standards for suspicious activity reporting. Uh, privacy policies in place across the country in the different fusion centers. Um, it's a, in a nutshell, neighborhood watch for the nation. Um, in addition, though, it works. It's uh, um, many of the disruptions that you read about in the newspaper come from uh, either directly out of the NSI or from SAR-like uh, activities in local police departments. Um, thanks, Shemendra. We also heard, though, there was uh, you know some criticism as far as things we still need to do uh, regarding information sharing and some progress that, that has to be made. Can you can you show us demonstrate some of those areas? Yes, when, when you think about the challenges that face uh, the information sharing environment, our mission partners, federal, state, local, tribal, far and away the biggest challenge is the budgetary headwinds, the uh, current financial, uh, financial environment. Um, it's, it's been pretty clear that the years since 9-11, a lot of money has gone into federal agencies uh, run counterterrorism, homeland security type, type applications. Um, so as money is cut, gee, there's, a, there's actually, in addition to the challenges, an opportunity towards using shared services, uh, standard approaches, virtualization, cloud computing, things like that. So it's a real challenge, but also a real opportunity. It's something that we've been focused on with our looking at standards and now moving towards procurement and strategic sourcing, leveraging those standards with our partners in the industry. Since the, the WikiLeaks, alleged WikiLeaks um, incident, uh, there's been a renewed focus on finding the right balance between uh, information sharing and information security. Um, to this end, President Obama, as you're well aware, established issued an executive order which uh, established uh, the, the Classified Information Sharing and Safeguarding Office, and they actually located that inside ISC, inside your office. Can you give us an update on, on where you are with this, ISO? Yes. Uh, the government did a broad structural review uh, post WikiLeaks, and uh, we last year stood up an integrated CISO, or the Classified Information Sharing and Safeguarding Office, as our part of the, the government's response. Um, you know, it's important to recognize with uh, the government's response here, there's a complete commitment to information sharing. It's a one-way street. You need to share information to support the mission, but we have to do it responsibly. Right. Some people have talked about a trade-off between sharing and safeguarding. We don't look at it that way. Our, our perspective, and really it's a perspective shared across the government, is that you have to do both. Responsible information sharing is derivative of effective safeguarding. Things like improving identity management, access-based attribute control, uh, attribute-based access control, locking down removable media, and a variety of other things that we've, uh, we've put into motion. Uh, the, the private sector plays a big role in, in, in information sharing in your efforts. Um, and 85 percent of the critical infrastructure in the United States um, is owned by the private sector. It's been widely reported. Uh, what kind of initiatives are underway to enhance that relationship and, and what's the status of those efforts? That's a great question. We absolutely have to work with our partners in the private sector. We colloquially refer to it as critical infrastructure or key resource sectors. Um, I talked earlier about the nationwide suspicious activity reporting initiative. 
there's a big effort underway now to expand that more fully to uh, what we refer to as our hometown partners, fire, EMS, 911 operators, um, and security uh, personnel in critical infrastructure key resource sectors. Uh, there's about 2.2 million security guards, for example, across the country. Um, it's critical that they're fully integrated into the national information sharing architecture. Um, so we're, we're working through those sort of things right now. Well, Smendra, as always, it's great to see you. And for those of you that are watching, um, we also have the, uh, all of the panels from that day, including the keynote from General Clapper, the Director of National Intelligence. Uh, Smendra is Paul's uh, more detailed conversation with him and uh, David Shedd and the White House representation, um, available on our website at csis.org. But as always, thank you very much uh, for your support, Smendra, and best wishes with uh, all of your challenges and going forward. Yeah, and thank you, Ozzy. Thank you for all your support and your partnership. And I'd also like to encourage your viewers to come to our website, www.isc.gov. Follow us on Twitter, at Share and Protect. When you come to our site, sign up for email alerts, read the blogs, comment if you like. Um, and thanks again, Ozzy, for your support. Thank you.